Hi, welcome to a brand new video of the Targeted Individual Experience, the Targeted Individual Program. This video, like all other videos that I've done, is to expose the crime that's being done against the targeted individual community and targeted individuals. We as targeted individuals are part of a non-consensual human experimentation program. On top of that, we have been illegally microchipped. Why were we microchipped? We were microchipped for the study and application of what is called remote neural monitoring. Okay? Meaning that we have been implanted with a microchip in our brain and that microchip is able to decode our brain wave signals. It is able to wirelessly transmit data okay, to a computer that decodes the signal so that the operators who is sitting behind the computer and the monitor can see or read our thoughts on that computer monitor. In turn, they can also send signals to our brain in order to psychologically and physically affect us. And not just affect us in terms of uh, biologically, but psychologically, right? So, for example, if they want you to go somewhere, they will transmit a command, which you will in turn hear in your own internal voice, that interpretation which they've sent to you. And most likely, you will go to that destination without even thinking twice because again you are hearing your own internal thought right so that's one of the purpose another is the directed energy weapons in the field of microwave radiation radio wave radiation in terms to in terms of inflicting pain okay causing vibrations within the human body through our bone structure. There's a technology called bone conduction. Okay, there's another one called vibrational acoustic. Okay, there's also the microwave auditory effect weapon. These are all weaponized technology that is based on the microwave and radio wave a uh, spectrum a uh, frequency a uh, frequency spectrum okay now in order for the perpetrators of these uh, non-consensual and illegal microchipping experimentation in order for them to get away with doing what they are doing they have to select people within society because they have to use or uh, experiment on people within the broader society in order to understand how the technology is going to work, how they're going to use it, right? what application they're going to use it for, and so forth. They were doing this within the prison complex, but that is a confined space. They were doing it within the mental institutional complex, the psychiatry industry, uh, the um, psychiatric facilities, but again, that is a more confined space. Okay, so in the larger or broader world, ex outside of those confined space, which again, this technology is going to be used. It's going to be used to control people. They will claim that it's going to be used for investigative purpose. They will claim that it's going to be used to help people who can't do things by themselves, you know, particularly quadriplegics, 
there have been a lot of experimentation done on quadriplegics. Okay, and if you look up, um, uh, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Stephen Hawkins. Okay, and look up the technology that he was using in order to um, communicate. Okay, because he was also quadriplegic. All right, so my duty as a victim of this is to expose this and let people know what's going on. Okay, the microwave technology is very powerful. It is unseen. When you tell people what's going on, they tend not to believe you. And it's understandable because, again, this technology is used to control the human mind. Now, besides targeted individuals, Okay. In the broader society, people are not implanted. The technology which is called silent sound sped spectrum, okay? It is used to get a large group of people to behave in a cohesive synchronized manner. So, they too are being controlled but they're being controlled not as an independent uh, entity, but as a group, right? Kind of like in cults, right? So a cult member, they operate within the group, okay? So this technology is being used with a psychological operation of PSYOPs to surveil, harass, psychologically torture, damage of the victims, properties, personal items, or what have you. The damage or the murder of their pets. Okay. Why do they do this? To silent, to try and silent the victims. Right? So why do they get the community involved? Because they have villainized you. They have made you out to be some bad person that you know they need to watch or you know they need to get rid of so they will manipulate you they had manipulate you and have manipulated you and continue to manipulate you okay so this is what I want uh, targeted people to understand that when you you know always asking why don't ask why anymore the fact that this is being done to you, what you need to do now is to research. Research, develop ways that can help you to cope with the targeting. Okay, if it's getting a, using the phone to record your targeting, putting it on YouTube, put it on the internet, expose what's being done. Okay, that may help you psychologically. It may help you gain some sort of confidence when it comes to going outside. Because you will see a lot of your perpetrators will turn around and run because they don't want to be on video. They don't want to be identified as a person that's been committing a crime against you and I. Okay? So I just want you guys to understand this. All right? And in terms of with law enforcement targeting you, emergency vehicles, EMTs, we call them too. Start to show a pattern of harassment around you by these people, right? Or these agencies, whether it's the police department, like I said, or the ambulatory services, or the fire department. Record them to show a pattern of harassment towards you. This is how you, you, you gotta fight back, okay? Now, if you choose not to fight back, there's nothing wrong with that. You have to do what's best for you. Okay? Let us, who decide to fight back, let us do the work for you. Okay? We are here to help you, to make you understand, to make you realize what's really going on, and to remove you from the crazy talking points or the out-of-the-world belief in which your perpetrators have conditioned you to believe so that they can get away with doing these type of experiments on you and you will blame it on 
aliens or some invisible deity in the sky and some you know evil uh, spirits or demon okay understand that we are dealing with evil people okay they're just evil and they don't care and if it's going to advance their uh, their career their monetary gains in terms of money power they're going to do it and you and I are nothing but a speck of dirt underneath the issue who they will step on and eliminate by any means necessary and this is why we expose this is why I expose okay all right so let's uh, start and I'm gonna go over the coercive mind control tactics and I'm going to bring it into the other talking points that I'm going to be talking about and you guys will understand I'll also bring it in context of the videos that I'm going to show okay okay so what is mind control or in today's term coercive persuasion okay and the coercive persuasion that term it is a sanitary or a sanitized words a word to take the negative stigma from brainwashing or mind control as you see in the 70s when the MK Ultra MK Ultra program was uh, exposed the word mind control and brainwashing was synonymous with MK Ultra so what the CIA did and the Department of Defense and the military was to create a new terminology right as they move forward with their revised edition of the MK Ultra program as well as the Coenta Pro program. Now the coercive persuasion program is a combination of those two. Also, it is a combination with the use of direct energy weapons, uh, particularly microwave and radio wave frequency for the purpose of controlling and influence the human mind. Illegal microchipping, which began in the mid 90s okay and so forth so we're gonna touch on these things uh, as the video continue so what are mind control tactics and what is the definition of mind control or brainwashing okay so today's mind control or brainwashing in academia is commonly referred to as a coercive persuasion as coercive persuasion coercive psychological systems or coercive influence the short description below comes from dr. Margaret Singer professor emeritus at the University of California at Berkeley the acknowledged leading authority in the world of mind control and cults and what I would suggest you guys do is to Google Margaret Singer right dr. Margaret Singer Coercive persuasion testify in front of Congress. Okay? So, a short overview. What is coercion? Coercion is defined by the American Heritage Dictionary as to force to act or think in a certain manner, to gain dominance, restrain, or coerce, or, or control by force, to bring about by force. Coercive psychological systems are behavioral change programs which use psychological force in a coercive way to cause the learning and adaptation of an ideology or designated set of beliefs, ideas, attitudes, or behavior. The essential strategy used by the operators of these programs is to systematically select, sequence, and coordinate 
many different types of coercive influence, anxiety, and stress-producing tactics over continuous periods of time. In such a program, the subject is forced to adapt in a series of tiny invisible steps. Each tiny step is designed to be sufficiently small so the subject will not notice the change in themselves or identify the coercive nature of the process being used. The subjects themselves I'm sorry, the subjects of these tactics do not become aware of the hidden organizational purpose of the coercive psychological program until much later, if ever. These tactics are usually applied in a group setting by well-intended but deceived friends and allies of the victim. This keeps the victim from putting up the ego defense we normally maintain in such adversarial situation. The coercive psychological influence of these programs aim to overcome the individual critical thinking abilities and free will, apart from any appeal to inform judgment, victims gradually lose their ability to make independent decisions and exercise informed consent. Their critical thinking, defensive, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, de defenses, cognitive process, value, idea, attitudes, conduct, and ability to reason are undermined by a technological process rather than by meaningful free choice, rationality, or the inherent merit or value of the ideas or proposition being presented. So I'm not going to get into the how to do work. You guys can go on to psychologicalharassment.com on the uh, mind control tactic, coercive mind control tactic, and read the rest of the information. Okay. So let's move on to, again, Dr. Robert J. Lipton, Eight Criteria for Thought Reform. Okay? Now this is an earlier uh, description, okay, of uh, another description of uh, mind control, right? Controlling the human mind, reprogramming to think how you want it to think. So let's talk about Milu control, right? The most basic feature is the control of human communication within the within an environment, which I'm going to show you as I play the video. Where again, I'm at the bus stop. As I'm walking to the bus stop again, you uh, I didn't couldn't record it, but two police cruisers, uh, SUVs, drove past. Um, I went to the store, got out the store, walk, keep walking to the bus stop, turn the corner, you'll see that one of the police vehicles parked up there. And so at this point, you know, I took up my phone to start recording. Okay? But we'll get into that. I want to finish this first and then we'll get to the video and then I'll go back to this uh, section here as well as the current situation. Okay. If the control is extremely intense, it becomes internalized control. And it, an attempt to manage an individual inner communication. Control over all a person sees, hears, reads, writes, information control creates conflicts in respect to individual autonomy. Groups express this in several ways. Group process, isolation from other people, which they do to us as TI. Psychological pressure, again, they do to us as TI. Graphical distance, geographical distance, or unavailable transportation, which you'll see uh, in the video. Sometimes physical pressure. Often a sequence of events, such as seminars, lectures, group encounters, which becomes which become increasingly intense and increasingly isolated, making it extremely difficult, both physical and psychological, for no one to leave. Set up sets up a sense of antagonism with the outside world. It's us against them. Quote. Closely connect 
to the process of individual change of personality. Mystical manipulation. Again, this is very important because you have a lot of TI who are religious, will see what's being done as some sort of spiritual warfare. But it's not spiritual warfare. This is mind control. This is evil individuals manipulating people, you and I, as well as the perpetrators out there, civilian perps, into behaving and acting in a negative manner. Okay? So, mystical manipulation, plan spontaneity. Excessive, I'm sorry, extensive personal manipulation seek to promote specific pattern of behavior and emotion in such a way that it appears to have arisen simultaneously from within the environment, which is actually, while it actually has been orchestrated, okay? Totalist leaders claim to be agents chosen by God. These are your, the architect of this program. History are some supernatural force to carry out the mystical imperative. And this is what these people, your civilian perps, they're thinking this is some type of, uh, uh, they're, they're God soldiers, or you hear them say all the time, they're warriors for Christ and all this stuff. So the government is very good at manipulating people and using their religious belief to get them to do what they want them to do, or using their religious belief to humiliate them, right? The principles God centered or otherwise can be put forcibly and claim exclusively so that the cult and its belief becomes the only true path to salvation or enlightenment. The individuals then develop the psychology of a pawn and participate actively in the manipulation of others. The leader who becomes the center of the mystical manipulation or the person in whose name it is done can be sometimes more real than an abstract God or therefore attractive and therefore attractive to cult members. Legitimizes the deception used to recruit new members and or raise fun and the deception used on the outside world. Okay, let's talk about the purity. Uh, you know, so you see a lot of people wearing white, okay? And again, uh, so you talk about the world becomes sharply divided into the pure and the impure. And the impure. The, the absolute good, the group ideology, and the absolute evil, anything outside the group, one must continuously change or conform to the group norm. Tendencies towards guilt and shame are used as emotional levers for the group for the group's controlling and manipulative influences. Once a person has experienced a total polarization of evil, of good evil, black white thinking, this is what we as TIs have in our mind, this is how we think, right? It is, it has, he has great difficulty in regaining a more balanced inner sensitivity to the complexities of human morality. The rational the, the radical separation of pure impure is both within the environment, the group, and the individual. Ties in with the process of confession. One must confess when one is not conforming. Okay? Confession. Cultic confession is carried beyond its original religious, legal, and therapeutic expression to the point of becoming a cult in itself. Sessions in which one confess to one's sin are accompanied by patterns of criticism and self-criticism, generally transparent within small groups with an active and dynamic thrust towards personal change. It is an act of symbolic self-surrender, makes it virtually impossible to attain a reasonable balance between worth and humility. A person confession to various sins of pre-cultic existence can both believe in those sins and be covering over other ideas and feelings that she he is either unaware or of unaware of or reluctant to discuss. Often a person will confess to lesser sins while holding on to other secrets, often criticism, questions 
doubts about the group, leaders that may cause them not to advance to a leadership position. The more I accuse myself, the more I have a right to judge you. Okay, sacred science, the total the totalists, sorry, the totalist Malou maintains an aura of sacredness around its basic doctrine or ideology, holding it as an ultimate moral version of the order of human existence. Questioning or criticizing those basic assumptions is prohibited. A reverence is demanded for the ideology doctrine. The originators of the, ide of the ideology uh, doctrine the present bearers of the ideology doctrine offers considerably security to young people because it greatly simplifies the world and answers a contemporary need to combine a sacred set of dogmatic principles with a claim to a science embodying the truth about human behavior and human psychology. Okay, so I'm going to stop this here. Uh, I'm going to move on. So let's look at uh, this definition of milieu, right? Milieu. All right, so what is it? It's a person social environment. So as a TI, when you're in your milieu, right, which is your social environment, okay, they are in control of this. So that's why it talks about here in the beginning that we talk about um, milieu control, meaning that they control your environment. Okay, it's like a, a rat in a maze. Okay, we're like the human beings in a maze that they control, right? And they do it through a psychological process, right? Psychological manipulation, as well as the use of these uh, direct energy weapons for the purpose of mind control, as well as the illegal microchip. Okay, so it's a combination, and they're very They've created this, this this program in a way in which they can test out these technologies, okay, and get away with it by using the psychiatric industry, using manipulated friends and family members, using you who they've manipulated, right, who had no clue, no idea, as I read in terms of the coercive position program, where you're being conditioned without any idea of what's happening to you. Okay, so now let's move on to this uh, document here from this page uh, from the CIA declassified MK Ultra program, and it is important. Actually, you know what? I want to. I'm going to save this because this, I believe, is what they've done to a high school uh, woman, a, a woman that I knew from high school. She and I are friends on Facebook, and. And I think that they have basically uh, brainwashed her uh, into participating in my targeting. And I'll tell you the reason why, because you'll see her in the video, and I'll show you exactly what it is that they tried to do. So we're going to save this. All right, so I just want to uh, close this out, as well as this that I've read. And um, this you can leave up here. All right, so non-lethal weapons. This is from Wide Magazine. Uh, 2008, okay, February 18, 2008. Report non lethal weapons could target brain mimic schizophrenia. Of all the crazy, bizarre, less lethal weapons that have been posed, the use of microwave to trigger the human mind remains the most disturbing. The question has always been is this anything more than urban myth? We may not have the final answer to this question, but a newly declassified Pentagon report by effects of selected non-lethal weapon obtained by a private citizen under the Freedom of Information Act provides some fascinating tidbit on a variety of exotic weapon ideas. Among those discussed are weapons that could disrupt the brain, as well as my long-time obsession, the Voice of God uh, device, device, which creates voices in people's heads. As a report note, application of the microwave hearing technology could facilitate a private message transmission. 
it may be useful to provide a disruptive condition to a person not aware of the technology. So you see, once you are not aware of the technology, they can totally control you. Okay? When you are aware, it becomes more difficult. Because now you acknowledge, you understand, and you're more aware of your own thought pattern and what you're thinking, as opposed to just going along with it as if, you know, because you didn't know. Okay? Not only might it be disruptive to the sense of hearing, it could be psychologically devastated if one suddenly heard voice, voices, if one suddenly heard voices within one head. Voices in your head disturbing? Heck yeah. Considering it is something most people associate with schizophrenia, the age-old question is whether such a weapon is possible. According to report, it is not only possible, it already, it's already been demonstrated in crude form. And again, when they tell you this is crude form, it's not true because my targeted, my targeted became overt in 2002, and they were using the microwave auditory effect uh, weapon on me, the silent sound spectrum technology on me. So you know, there's nothing crude about what they've done. Maybe in the beginning. But it did a lot of damage to these uh, early targeted individuals who were experimented on using these weapons. Because the frequency of the sound heard is dependent on the pulse characteristic of the RF energy, radio frequency, it seems possible that this technology could be developed to the point where words could be transmitted to be heard like a spoken word. except that it could only be heard within a person's head. In one experiment, communication of the words from 1 to 10 using speech modulated microwave energy was successfully demonstrated. Microphones next to the person experienced the voice could not pick up experiencing the voice could not pick up the sound. Additionally, development of this would open up a wide range of possibilities. This technology requires no extrapolation to estimate its usefulness. Microwave energy can be applied at a distance, and the appropriate technology can be adapted to can be adapted from existing radar units. Aiming devices, likewise, are, avail are available, but for special circumstances which require extreme specificity, there may be a need for additional development. Okay. I'm not going to continue on here because I, I want to read this, which is very, very important here. Uh, let's see, do I have the correct document here? Okay. Let's see, is this it? Okay. Yes, here we go. All right, so the, the newer technology that the secret agencies have been implanted in people's brain not only allows them to modulate, demodulate the neurological pattern associated with human thought, synthetic telepathy, but by extension also allows them to cause implanted subjects which speak to speak involuntarily out loud. In other words, not only are your private thoughts not necessarily your own, but also when you speak it, it's possible that the impulse to speak and the choice of words was likewise caused remotely by a government handler operator. In either case, you will not become constantly aware that the technology is active when you think their thoughts or speak their words. The technology bypasses your conscious will and perception. You will think the thought or speak the word, but in most cases, you will not be able to discern that it was not of your own will, except in cases where the handler causes an alarm designed to get your attention, such as causing other physiological response in your body or sounds in the environment to which you have been conditioned. 
occurring, uh, occurring simultaneously with the artificially induced thoughts or speech. What is this? What this means is that if you are a subject of these outrageous human rights violations, then your operator handler has the capability to communicate with you by making you speak their words out loud using your voice all via remote control of your own of your brain itself any complaints make you any compl any complaints you make about this sort of treatment to law enforcement or medical personnel will result in an immediate and automatic diagnosis of schizophrenia which will then make it impossible for them to make it possible, sorry, make it possible for them to arrest, institutionalize, confine, drug, or further experiment on you against your will. Important, the news clipping, the news clipping which follows present information that is designed for public consumption. The actual level of technology being covertly deployed against civilian population is many decades more advanced. See the exhibit in the series for a fuller understanding of the critical import, important topic, which uh, you can find here, again, popular science. Scientists can pluck images out of your brain. Okay? So, they can also hear where it says in the science blog, uh, researchers create short-term memories in vitro. Right? Let's go down here. Downloading new skills into our brain, like characters on the matrix set, to become a reality, science says. Okay, so we're just going to end this right here. And let's go to um, here. Okay, so let's go to the hidden evil PDF. Okay. See here. All right. New weapon for a new world order. Dr. Alexander and the Morrises have made multiple reference to the term new world order in their publication. It is unclear whether or not they are aware of what this new world order will be. In the January 2007 issue of the Washington Post, Dr. Alexander said, let me go with this. Siren, I mean, it's the sirens, the call off. Okay, said that these weapons should be used to electronically, electronically neuter people. So, what does the word neuter means? Okay, let's copy that. All right, let's go. Actually, let's go look up neuter. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go back to uh, this. Okay. So the word neuter, right? Objective grammar, noting or pertaining to a gender that refers to things, classes, as either masculine nor feminine, right? Of a verb, intransitive, biology, having no organs for of reproduction without sex, asexual, okay? So, n neuter means to sterilize also, all right? Where it says here, yeah, an animal made sterile by castration or uh, spread. Now, what they are doing to a lot of us TIs is try to neuter, neuter us in a psychological sense, right? So when we talk about how uh, they try to deny us, um, you know, the ability to meet people or the chances to meet people, to engage with them, to um, uh, have relationship with the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever your um, preference is, this is what they do. Okay? So they will break up your relationship. Right, in order so that they can use 
it as a control mechanism to say, well, I'll send you a subliminal message that if you don't, uh, you know, conform to the conditioning, then you will never get back with that person. They will send somebody else to be with that person or have that person, uh, you know, interested in somebody else, right? So this is, again, some of the things that, that they do. You know, recently, um, again, uh, and you'll see in the video how the police, again, you'll see how they do it, right, by the use of threats, okay? And I'm going to uh, show you guys exactly, you know, what's, what it is that, that they're doing, right, what's going on, okay? So, in this article, New Weapons for a New World Order, which appeared in the March 1993 issue of the Boston Globe, he wrote, the United States must be able to protect national interests and values, even in ambiguous circumstances. Remember, these non-lethal weapons experts have suggested the domestic use of these weapons. What this means is that anyone against any element of the new world order is the enemy. In February 1995, Wired Magazine explained that Deputy Secretary of Defense John Deutsch and Janet Reno signed a memo the year before stating that the DOD, Department of Defense, will be sharing this technology with domestic law enforcement agencies. Did you guys get this? Right? So, hence the reason why we as targets, T as TI, are uh, being harassed and targeted by law enforcement okay because law enforcement have these technologies okay they're getting this, these technologies directly from the military from the Department of Defense from the CIA okay I want you guys to understand this okay traditional US military doctrine why it announced using overwhelming force to break things and kill people has its limits in the new world order. The article quote Janet Morris who described these new weapons as a revolutionary strategic doctrine that would allow the US government to cope with the demands of the of a new world order. Okay? So let's talk about one of these technology which is scientific telepathy. I'm sorry, not scientific, but synthetic telepathy, okay? I first became aware of Alan Frey's work at Willow Grove in 1972, just after completing the holographic concept of reality. I was working with Dr. Carl uh, Schneiser, or Schnizer, all right? Let me see if I'm saying that right. Uh, M-R-U at the time and was asked about the significance of his work. Realizing it's possible use in mind control, my first reaction was to go on red alert. Full significance was not yet understood at this time. Basically, Frey had discovered another sensory motor input in the higher blue band frequency of point 0 0.3 to 3 gigahertz at very low amplitudes of power if it was as if we had another type of vision but did not know how to see what was being received it constitute the next generation of subliminal communication my work at the time was involved with an AI database for paranormal reference project Parafile. A second paper was also presented by the Omniversal Symposium, California State College at Sonoma, September 29, 1973. That's, I mean, this is just to let you guys know how long they've been working on these things, right? Since the probably in the late 60s, okay, maybe the early 60s, who knows? This was titled Embryonic Holography and was an application of the holographic concept of reality model. It dealt with biogenesis and 
neurological regeneration and includes speculation on the origin of cancer, faith healing, psychic surgery, and more technical aspect of mind-body energies. One week after the delivery of that paper, four men came into my place of business, two in suits and two in full army dress. The two suits held me under close arrest while the two army personnel went through my files pulling anything related to embryonic holographic. The paper was written from old notes and memories, but it was not the same. What got this paper what got this paper classified top secret for almost twenty years was that it was critical for the use of Alan Frey's study and its possible application to mind control. I never was able to draw what was so important in that initial paper until I began researching this paper more than 24 years later. I will discuss those aspects further in this document. Okay, so I had to uh, pause the video because my daughter uh, came and she wanted uh, some cereal. Okay, and I just fed her. I just you know, but not too long ago, fed her, and she came to me and um, said that she was hungry. She wanted cereal, so I went into the kitchen to get the cereal. She came in the kitchen and she said, "Daddy." Uh, I want to show you something. So I turned to her and I said, show me what? And she started to do this walk. So I said, to, I was like, this walk was seemed very familiar to me. And I said, how does she know to do this walk? And again, because the people behind this technology, you know who they are, they are white supremacists, Nazis. And so basically, instructed my daughter to do what is called the Limburg walk which is what the Germans okay the Nazis uh, did when they um, they had a parade right or they marched in front of their Führer okay so this is the walk that she was doing this is uh, the Lamberg actually the Lamberg walk in the kitchen okay now why would how would my six-year-old know how to do that walk okay she just came to me and she said daddy you know I'm hungry go in the kitchen she comes like I want to show you something and she started doing that walk right so again it is you know very well apparent to me as a targeted individual that I understand that the people who have created these technologies to control people are in fact you know Nazis white supremacists they're white supremacists Nazis within the US government within the security agencies within the militaries okay within you know law enforcement who are using these weapons okay again I can't you know that they would have her do this but this is you know this is what they do. This is nothing new. You know, they use my kids by uh, controlling their mind to tell me things. You know, they do things. Again, like recently, uh, Pamela started um, doing the palm fixation drill, hand behind the back. Uh, thing or her hands to the side and then she turns away and walk for me she will turn her hands backwards and open up the palm of her hand so I can see so this is the type of stuff that they do you know for example yesterday I went I'm sorry to um, you know because uh, I do want to get back to uh, what I was reading but yesterday she left her phone and I had to take her phone to her job for her because I was you know, during the day, I had went to register for school. So, you know, took a phone to her, got to her workplace, and, you know, usually, you know, like, 
where's your co-workers? Her co-workers were all cleared out. There was no one in there. This is the people that who she hangs out with. No one was there because you know why? They use her co-worker to manipulate her, right? Because, you know, when we have, when we used to have arguments, what have you, she will go and she will tell her co-workers. And I keep telling her, I said, you know, listen, these people, they may act like if they like you, okay? And me being a black man with these other people, these are, um, these are uh, uh, Pakistani, white, uh, you know, you know, we all know that they don't like black men, period. So anytime that they can, any chance they can to, to break up a, 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 a black family, they'll do it without second thought, okay? Without even thinking about it, they'll do it. This, this is how much they've been taught to hate us, okay? So, anyway, I was just, you know, but that's the shit that they do. And then, you know, they, of course they, they go clear because they don't want to face me because they know, see what guilty people do? They don't want to face you, so they'll, you know, they'll, they'll go away. They'll go away. That's what they do. All right? Okay, so let's get back to what I was reading here on the um, synthetic telepathy. Okay. In 1961, Alan Frey, a freelance biophysicist and engineering psychologist, report that human could hear microwave. Most U.S. most United States scientists dismissed this discovery as a result of outside noise. James C. Lynn offered a more technical description of the experiment. Frey found that human subject exposed to uh, 1,310 millihertz and 2,982 uh, uh, millihertz, uh, uh, yeah, millihertz, uh, microwaves at average power densities of 0.4 to 2 milliwatts centimeter square, perceived auditory sensation described as buzzing and knocking sound. The sensation occurred instantaneously at average incidence power density well below the necess the the necessary that's necessary that necessary for known uh, I think that's my uh, ther my therapy <laughs> uh, the sensation occurs instantaneously at average incidence power density well below the nece the necessary for known biological damage and appearance and appear to originate from within or near the back of the head. It talks about pulse microwave technology, pulse microwave technology, pulse microwave voice to skull, or other sound to skull transmission was discovered during World War II by radar technicians who found that they can hear the buzz of a train of pulse being transmitted by radar equipment they were working on. This phenomenon has been studied extensively by Dr. Alan Frey, Willow Grove, 1965, whose work has been published in numbers of in a number of reference book okay uh, I'm not gonna continue on this you guys can find this uh, online all you got to do is Google synthetic uh, synth telepathy right it is a PDF it is available online and you guys can read it so I'm not gonna in, engage in or indulge in too much of this because there's a lot of stuff that I have to um, talk about. Okay, so let's go to the video. Okay, I want you guys to understand this. So what they'll do to me from time to time is that they'll send a mentally ill person to, you know, come around me, you know, do things. I guess they're trying to group me in with these people. But, you know, it is expected because when you are speaking the truth about these things, this is what they will do, right? They will try to discredit you. They'll label you as mentally ill in order to discredit you so that no one will listen to you. 
but what I do is that I give you guys the information so you guys can see and I can relate my experience to the uh, technology that I'm describing all right precisely because this is what they do this is what I do right so when they want to say and again in the cursive persuasion when you don't follow along with their conditioning or the conditioning hasn't take place or take place take fully a whole of your psyche and you're fighting against it right they will do numerous things as I talked about you know the uh, the threats right the intimidation tactics you know the uh, uh, financial collapse uh, the disintegration of your relationships um, the re recurrent of a uh, the occurrence of a mental of a mental illness or reoccurrence of a mental illness which is externally caused right by people within the TI environment who are causing them psychological harm and psychological harassment right so here I am this is from the other video that I did where as I was getting the car repaired so I took the bus home that day um, and I forgot to put this video on that video that I did <laughs> okay but I'm doing it now I'm explaining to you guys something so as I was going to the bus stop I need to get change so across the street there was this woman standing there so you see sitting right here wearing the white right she sees me cross the street and she I was going the direction of the store so she jumps in front of me to go into the store so I went into the store I um, what did I get I think I got some something to eat right and then I proceeded to go to the bus stop she follows me out the store as I'm sitting in the bus stop she comes and she sits right next to me smoking a cigarette okay and again this is the the things that they'll do because you know you know they want to try to say because you're talking about what's being done to you that you're crazy right that people will see you as crazy and it's true because people don't understand that these technologies exist and this is what I try to show people that yes these technologies do exist and they're using it on us every single day use it on us our children our significant other our family members if they have not fully uh, and they won't do it fully but let's say if they have not diverged certain information and a lot of people get certain information about this uh, program but they may not the majority is not going to get the full grasp because they're not going to get the full extent of what's being done okay they are just being told what they need to know on a need to know basis they're not being fully told the extent of this program with the use of these technologies against the TIs and against them also okay so she comes sits down smoking and you see she's blowing smoke in my way okay so she gets up you'll see her walk right and she turns and she's gonna stand on the wall over here because you know they sent her they sent her to me right so she's gonna stand up over there and you know she was just staring at it, looking at me but you know I didn't care because she was just out of my way so I don't have to breathe in that smoke but this is the shit that they do and I'll show you again and as you as I go along in this video you'll see this pattern repeated multiple times right all right so let's go to the next video so this is Monday uh, I believe it was Monday. It's um, 7.30 yet. Let's see. Uh, what? Thirtieth. It was a Tuesday. This was a Tuesday the 30th. All right. This is July. Okay. This is in the morning. Okay. I'm walking to the store. This woman standing in front of this building here. Start doing these hand signals. As I got closer, she she moves right here, her hands behind her head like this, 
you know, doing the full finger stuff or what have you. So when I took up my phone to start recording, she stopped. But the reason why she stopped because she was being signaled to stop. Okay. So as I play this video, you'll hear a whistle. Okay. There is a, a dude, right? He's in the street looking at her, whistling to give her a signal that I'm recording so she stops with the hand signals, right? So now her hands is just resting on her neck, okay? And you'll see him right there. Okay? As I turn the camera, you see him right there? Let's go back slightly. Uh, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Uh, too much. Okay? Uh, okay? Right there. Okay? And... So I turned the camera to him and he saw that and then and yeah, right. So he hear me say gotcha to him. So what happened is that I had went to the bank first. I went to the stores. So I went to the bank to take money out. He shows up outside the bank, knocking on the glass, and he's like, So, you like taking pictures of of, of men with white beard. Okay? Now, okay, but again, this is how they do the subliminal messaging, right? So, a person who is not targeting me, if they're upset by, you know, get them a camera, they'll be like, well, why are you taking pictures, pictures or video of me, right? They won't go into this full descriptive details of their facial hair or their clothing or something like that. But this is what these perps do because, again, they want to, um, you know, send you these subliminal messages, right? So he comes knocking on the window on the bank, and he's like, yeah, there he is. He like taking pictures of men with white beard. But again, you know, just <laughs> letting you guys know what they do. See, understanding human behavior will help you as a TI to kind of ward off a lot of these subliminal uh, message and tactics that they use. Because just think about when you wasn't a TI. Let's not say it wasn't a TI, but when you wasn't uh, aware of the targeting, right? You know, people didn't just used to just describe shit to you out of nowhere, like this guy's doing about his white beard, you know? <laughs> but anyway, this is you know again that's that's what they do. And and uh, I was taking money out, so I couldn't get to uh, record him. But I'm like whatever. So the next video you'll see, uh, and since I've noticed that they've been uh, targeting me so heavily, so now you know I'm um, I was uh, at this. this is, actually, I'm walking to the to the to the bank first. Okay, so as I reached the corner, I took up my phone start recording and of course you hear the the sirens in the background okay and then you'll see this guy here the red shirt he's doing this okay another guy see how he shows us showed me his phone let's go back there and look at how they're, they're both looking across the street because they want me to look across the street but I'm not paying anymore so you'll see what I'm not paying him any mind. So you'll you'll see what with his phone he's gonna turn his phone towards me like that, okay? While he's looking across the street, because they want him to look across the street, and then you'll see this guy here. He what he's doing? He's pinching his nose, okay? Okay, you see another guy here pinching his nose. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. Okay. 
months, all right? So, you know, like, I, I wasn't recording them for a couple of days just to make them think or believe that um, that I wasn't going to record them anymore. Because, again, they always send you a subliminal message about being quiet, don't speak about what's being done, using the police to intimidate, to try to silence you. So that wasn't going to work. <clears throat> okay? And so here now, you see another, uh, this, is, this is me um, coming out from the bank at this point. And, you know, I started recording right away. Okay? You see this guy here? He's acting as if he's going to get on the bus. But he's not. What he's doing, he's, you'll see, if you look at his hands, his middle finger is sticking out. He's trying to give me the finger. Well, he is giving me See, he did a full finger. And, uh, you know, then he just walks off, right? Okay, now you'll see this woman comes out of this, the thing that's the Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. And you see how she starts looking down? Because she knows that what it is. This is all synchronization. They know what they do. Okay, and then what is this guy doing here? Is he uh, does he have his phone in his hand? Okay, so all of a sudden you'll see him. Let's see here. So you'll see the guy that put his phone up. So you'll see him standing there by the tree, right there. Okay, right there. You see, and again, what they are trying to do now is do some sort of uh, uh, NLP, right, in terms of some anchoring, okay? So you'll see as she comes out, as she comes out, she does this, okay? Let me see if I can pause it exactly at that point. And then she realized that, see right there, she does this. When she realized that I'm videotaping, she stops, okay? Now, at the same time she comes out, guy standing by the tree with the white shirt he takes his phone out and now he's gonna act as if he's having a conversation as I put the camera back on him now he brings the phones up to his ear right but again this is all orchestrated now okay you hear me say crazy the reason why they do this a lot too and I think I've shown you this before well they'll send someone with a banana in their hand because you know it's a terminology that he or she is bananas, meaning that they're, they're crazy. So immediately, my counter to her is when I start to say crazy. Okay? That's how you counter it. Now, she's not unpeeling the banana. What she's doing is that she's twisting it. Okay? See that? And she's taking her thumb and she's placing her thumb on it. And you can tell she is not only mad but she knows now but she already knows that she's being recorded and she doesn't like it okay so again I like I always say you have to lay low just like how they lay low and then they'll target you heavily which is what they started to do and then you have to be ready you have to recognize it and start recording because this is the best time in which you will get the evidence to show the psychological manipulation, psychological harassment, the uh, psyops that's being waged against you. Okay? So look at her. And again, see that? So she's not trying to unpeel the banana. And then what they started doing now, you'll see her eyes move uh, to the right. Okay? And they do that a lot where, because they won't turn their head. Sometimes they'll just move their eyes left or right. And that's me singing. Because you can do the same thing to them, right, psychologically now, once you begin to understand their tactics, their methods, okay? And you can use it against them to protect yourself. Right, so whenever they try to send some subliminal message, you send them back a subliminal message. That's going to be embedded into their mindset.
You remember now he walks and he looks at the vehicle license plate, he turns and he looks at me. You remember, this is the, they, they use the same tactics over and over again because they've been doing this for years, right? So when they do introduce something new, right? Again, you start to recognize it because it starts off with very subtle. But once you understand how they do it, you'll be able to pick it up right away. Okay? Okay, so let's go to the next video. And the next video you'll see is that I am coming out the store. Right? So I'm in the store. Coming out the store. This is all the same morning now, right? So you'll see, I already got the phone on record because <laughs> I already know. And then you'll see again another, uh, you know, mentally ill person. He was there talking to himself or what have you. And, um, you know, again, because you see, what they're trying to do is to try to get me to stop talking about it what it is that they're doing. So they figure, well, we're going to send some people who are mentally ill talking to themselves. They're, they're going to show him that this is what you sound like, okay? But hey, it doesn't bother me. You know, I'll em I embrace it. I embrace it, brothers and sisters. I embrace it. Okay? You want to call me crazy? Go ahead. But guess what? I show evidence Okay, that's what I do. Once you show evidence, and if this to call you crazy, particularly your friends or family members, then either they've been heavily indoctrinated with cognitive dissonance to where you start speaking the truth and they'll shut down, which most of them do. Or they are aware of it and they don't want to acknowledge it because they themselves play a role in committing a crime against you. Okay? Okay? So let's uh Okay, so this is one of the reasons also why they started heavily targeting me, right? Because as a targeted individual, anything that you try to do that's going to have a positive effect on your psyche and possibly your life, they're going to attack you, attack you, attack you to get you to give that up, to not pursue that, right? And remember too that these people within the government, within law enforcement agencies, you know, they can, especially you know, with these uh, psychiatrists and psychologists who work for these agencies, like the mental institution, you know, they can go to them and say, "Hey, this person is a, a danger to society or a threat to society." Have you? And they can they can label you and lock you away. And saying that you're crazy. This is how much control the state have over our lives. And so for people to think that and to say, well, you know, only God control their life, especially these religious people, again, that's part of your delusion. Okay? Because anyone within the state, regardless of what God you believe in, okay, if they want to ruin your life, if they want to take away your freedom, they can do it. They can set you up. They can use the technology to brainwash you, to control your mind, if you're not aware of it, okay? Get to commit a crime, and lock you away. Guess what? You did the crime, right? And what they're not being told, especially, you know, 
uh, because it's law enforcement, they're not going to say, oh, we're using these technologies on these people. They're not, they're not going to say that. But this is what they do. Yep. So let's go as we move closer. See, she starts playing with her hair as soon as the um, as she got close to me. Okay. And then here is the then he starts playing with his hair. Here is the super and pants building. You know. Actively participating and targeting me. You know, these Christians, that's what they do. And you'll have these this woman here too who they recently started uh participating in my targeting and you'll see how now he's going to take his other hands and he's going to start playing with his nose yeah, pinching his nose doing this taking his hand his finger and moving it up and down his nose that's what he was doing okay so let's go to the next video uh, this is what well, I think I had just dropped the kids off to school and I'm walking back and you had uh, this lady right here she was within the school she was standing up on the other side of where these two guys were right here when she sees me as I got closer she starts walking now to the entrance of the school okay Let me see if I can uh, increase the, I mean, uh, make this a little bigger. Uh, and it's going to be a pretty long video, but you know, nothing I can do about that. There's a lot of information that I need to uh, put out there, a lot of videos. Okay. Now, as as I approach, you'll see he steps back. All right. So now he steps back because you see he's looking at her, right? So, like I said, I talked about you know the civilian perps working in tandem with each other. So this is exactly what's happening. He's going to step back after looking at her. He's gonna stand there, step back. He's gonna fold his arm like he's some mad child. The other one that's sitting down, he's gonna put his hands by his neck. You see his four fingers. Okay. Then you'll see he starts grabbing his ears, right? So he grabs his ears right here. Okay. Now. You'll see this woman now as she's walked by, looking at me, doing, you know, the folded lips, you know, be quiet. Yeah, you know, this is what they do. And um, oh, just realized when I switched on the webcam, I had my hand uh, on my neck, so not trying to trigger anybody. Uh, if you are triggered by that, I'm sorry. But the most part, I try to keep my hands out of sight, right? So you have to excuse me uh, for that, okay? So again, you'll see how they work in tandem with one another, okay? All right, let's go to the next video. All right, so on Wednesday no I'm sorry Thursday yesterday I went down to my school because you hear me guys talking about you know registering for class you know I decided you know what yeah I'm going go back to school you know try to take my focus away from this target and uh, you know and it's hard you know because I know they're gonna be targeting me relentless you know at that college also okay in which they did you know, so I had to go pay a bill, right? Which they had for twenty something years. I'm like, wow. 
you guys keep a bill in your system for that long <laughs> you know so I went to pay it and you know after they had told me they said hey you know we we, we, we uh, made an ID for you and so all you have to do is come and pay the bill so I get there to pay the bill and she was like well you know it's not in the system I said what you mean not in the system I said I ca someone called me to tell me I can come pay it and she's like oh I remember so she went and you know got somebody else they found it uh, went to pay the bill they were like you gotta hold on because it's it's spread out over six semesters I'm like how is it spread out over six semesters okay because when I went to school there were a year that I went back that I didn't finish because of my job I was you know I was going to school at night and when I had to leave my boss was like listen I need you to get this job done you know what I'm saying so I had to I was like it was too stressful so I couldn't do it I was either quit the job which I couldn't because you know I was living uh, with my fiance at the time so I had to basically um, just stop going to school right but all the other times they have never told me that I owe them money okay they have never told me that so when she was like, oh, it's spread out within six semesters, and again, this is subliminal shit that they like to play with the numbers, okay? Because there's no way, right? I mean, if I'm, I have a bill, I have a bill, right? You, you told me the sum, the total sum, right? So now I got to pay each of them separately? That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, like I said, th this is all orchestrated shit that they do. And once you understand this, you know, it w you will uh, cease to... Uh, react and act in a way that's uh, detrimental that's um, you know to your health and to your psyche and so you know I was just it was just a lot of frustration uh, yesterday you know and like I said it was purposely being done so I get to after I paid the bill I went to the um, admissions and went to uh, actually to the register went to register And, you know, she was telling me that I still have a bill to pay. I said, no, I don't. I said, I paid it. I gave her my receipt. And so she had to call someone on the phone to try to get it resolved, which she did. But while she was doing that, she was blurring out my social security number loud on the phone. And there was this um, this young woman, not young woman, but, you know, this woman standing behind me. She was hearing the whole thing, hearing my social security number. Okay, and after the woman behind the counter said my social security number out loud, the woman behind me turned around and walked away immediately after. Okay, this is the shit that they do. We talk about in, in um, violating your privacy because they have people working in these uh, businesses, these establishments. Right, whether it be in the medical field, in academia, whatever else, and they just don't respect your personal information. And they feel like they can share it with whoever they want. Okay? So this is me confronting her about that situation. And the thing is that they feel that they got you so intimidated that you're not going to say nothing, right? Okay, let's... Okay, so check this out. Alright, so as she comes out of the side door, and that's why I turned the uh, camera so I can get her, you'll see her come out and she stick out her middle finger. Right? It's very quick. Okay? And like I said, these people, this shit is all orchestrated. You know, uh, her blurring out my social security number so that the woman behind me can hear it because this woman, she was waiting online. I went to the bursar to pay my bill. I came back. She was still on the line. You know, she was talking on her phone, what have you. 
uh, before I came back. And then when I came back, you know, because she should she could have gone. Nope, but she waited for me because they knew exactly what they were doing. Again, this is orchestrated. Okay? This is orchestrated. Okay, right there. See her middle finger sticking out right there just slightly? Again, because she didn't know I was going to look. But what they didn't know was I was recording it. Right? That's what they didn't know. So, again, it's classic when you're able to get this stuff, right? Let's go back on back to the third level. See, again, this is subliminal message because again, this is supposed to be some sort of game where your first, second, or third, you know, are they are you being tested, right? So sometimes when they target you heavily, you'll you know, if you're driving, you'll those um you know those uh, LCD uh, message uh, board that they have up for traffic, they'll say test on it. Or the bus will be, you know, uh, even the bus will be like tests on it. Here she says civil engineering. I'm gonna tell you where that comes in, right? I'm gonna explain to you now, okay? <clears throat> you say I do apologize for what I did. <clears throat> I don't accept her apology because, you know, like I said, this is all orchestrated, right? She did that on purpose so that woman can have my social security number. Okay, now she, let's get to the point where she says civil engineering because it's not civil engineering. You heard me tell her computer engineering, not civil engineering. Okay, so she sends me to look at, and I didn't think about this yesterday because you know there's so many shit that was going on, you know, with the targeting. So I went to look at for the um, civil engineering department because she said I need to speak to uh, the person you know there so on the wall they had the room numbers so I went to the wall looked at the room numbers I had to walk over to another building which I did okay and okay hold on let me um, okay so let's uh, go so anyway so the room was um, 433 right and so when I got there, I'm looking for 433. I didn't see 433. So something was like, go to go into room 432. Because there's 433 here. And then there was like four, um, I can't tell what number that says. It's about 420 something. So I had to take a picture of it. Because guess what? The number 32, right? You might talk about that. You know, uh, that's, a, that's a number that they use to try to trigger me. Right? So... I had to go into room 432 to get to 433. Then they told me that I shouldn't be in civil engineering. I said, well, that's what, you know, the woman at the register told me the way I need to go. Right? But again, you know, this is shit that they like to do. So anyway, um, I had to, there was a, cross, a, a, a classroom across the hall that was going on. So I asked the teacher there, the professor there. And, um, you know, he asked the custodian. His custodian was like, seventh floor but I was like you know I'm not falling for that shit again so I went to the directory so I was on the sixth floor so I went to the sixth floor all right and that's where I spoke to a professor uh, she I gave her my transcript she looked at it she recommend classes for me to take 
And of course, they're going to give me like hard ass classes, you know, calculus. I haven't been to school in over 20 years, and this woman is giving me calculus. But I'm like, okay, all right, you know what? Fine, fine, okay. And so I got to go to my neurologist to try to uh, uh, handle my short term memory loss and to, uh, you know, either get on some type of medication or something like that to help me improve my short-term memory because you know computer engineering is a lot and so I started uh, I bought this uh, this thing from Amazon yeah okay so I bought this it's called uh, neuro health okay and it's it says help improve memory aids cognitive health promotes clear thinking and I've been taking it for the past two days and you know like Pamela's cell phone number I can never remember it I cannot remember um, you know a lot of stuff like I read something five minutes later out of my mind you know so I the past two days like I said I've been taking it and this morning I said you know let me try something so went to my phone, uh, looked up Pamela's number, and I started to repeat it in my mind. Five minutes later, I repeated it in my mind, checked my phone to, to see if I was right, and I was right. 20 minutes later, I said to her, I said, Pamela, ask me what your number is. And she asked me, I said it. Okay, 50 minutes later, I asked her again. Ask me what your number is. She asked me, and I said it again. And I'm like, holy crap, okay, this stuff really works. Okay, even now, I can still remember her number. I'm not going to blur it out, but <laughs> I can still remember her number. Right? I'm amazed. I, if, sh shoot, man, how do I know about this stuff? A long time ago, and you know what? Another TI, RT in New York, he's been, um, he told me about something like this. You know, but it's just, you have a lot of stuff going on, your mind don't think straight and right. You know what I'm saying? And plus, you know, for the past year, I've been kind of shifting my focus uh, less on these uh, civilian perpetrators. I mean, I still do my video. Okay? Without a doubt, I still do my video. But I'll do my. Sometimes what I do now is that I'll do videos, and while I'm being targeted, I'm seeing it, but I'm not focusing on it. I'm letting the camera pick it up so that when I do go home, watch the video, then I can explain exactly what it is that they're doing. Right. So this is what I've been doing. So yes, if you're a target individual, you can get this on Amazon. It is, you know, it's called Neural Health. Okay, I think it's like fifteen seventy nine, something like that. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, as well as the the moringa tea, I get the um, the me version of moringa because there's many different uh, um, version from me, right? Um, which is very very good also. Okay, so that's what I I do. I get them both from Amazon. Okay, all right. So let's. And so I had to uh, go back to the to the register after I, you know, hand the paper in. And I got some audio, but I'm not going to play right now because, you know, it's just going to be too long. So I'm just going to skip past that because I recorded audio on my phone of the nonsense that were going on. It was, it was trying to send me to the wrong room or gave me a room number to go to. And that room number doesn't exist. Right. So this is this is what they they were doing. OK. All right, so um, got home. Uh, so after you know did all that, I went to speak to her economic advi um, uh, academic advisor, and you know she was putting my name in the computer. You know, giving me the classes that the professor recommended I take, and she's having all this issue. Everything coming up with error, 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 error. I mean, it was ridiculous, right? And I'm looking at the time, like, listen, I gotta go pick up my kids, lady. 
okay? But this is what they want to do. Sometimes they want to make you late, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to, it's, 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 it's the last day of um, the STEM program at my daughter's summer school uh, classes. Because Ethan, he's in the STEM program for the summer. And my daughter, she's taking summer class because she'll have to repeat the, she have to be kindergarten. And again, her short-term memory is greatly affected because of the, um, the microwave that we receive. And it particularly taught, you see, with, as a man, when it comes to my targeting a lot with the subliminals, is with women. Women, young girls, stuff like that, with, with Pam, then they do with my daughter, you know, with the hands behind the back, fix, palm fixation drill, that sort of stuff. So when they, they're using it on her, as well as Ethan too, but it's affecting her greatly. Because she's like me. She suffer from short-term memory loss. Okay? That's why I, I bought the Moringa tea and I start giving it to her. Her memory start improving a little bit. But I have to make an appointment to go and get her evaluated. Okay? Okay. So let's go to the next video. So after I picked up the kids from school, I had to go and take Pam's uh, phone to her job again, and they, they were talking to me there too. And like I said, the people who she usually hang out with in her circle, the work at her job, they were not there. They were not there. Because again, that's what guilty people do, because they know I was coming. So what they do, they excuse themselves. Okay? Again, because they'll tell her a whole bunch of shit. Because I know how this program works. Okay, this is dark. They use dark psychology, you know, called the the boyfriend destroyer, right? And you know she's you know listening and you know with the, to their nonsense. And I'm like, okay, hey, you know, you guys, you know, that's why we broke up because again, she was doing shit that was contradictory to what uh, who she said that she is. Okay, so. We've been together for 11 years, so that's a long time, and it's hard. You see, I'm still here, okay, but we're still not together, okay, and it's complicated. So I'm not gonna get into it, okay, but it's right at this point, it's very, very complicated, okay. So, anyway, after taking the phone to her, went to my house, and then we had to go back to her house, and we're walking to the bus st station, not, not bus station, the bus stop. So, as we're walking. We're gonna to go to the store. As we're walking, we saw two pull. I saw two police cars driving by very slowly. Uh, as I was, um, also there was a, a guy. And again, this is how they use that deportation theme, because this guy he had a handkerchief of the flag of Grenada. I think I have. Let me see if I can find that flag. Cause I have a. Flag. All right. Okay. So I couldn't find a handkerchief. So while I was walk into the store as the two police SUVs were driving by very slow. This guy walking towards us, because me and the kids, he had a handkerchief in his hands, but this handkerchief was the flag of the Grenada. And he sees me, he takes it, he covers his mouth with it. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, okay, right. Let me just show you guys. All right, so again, not trying to trick anybody, but he has it in his hands and he does this over his mouth. You know, with the handkerchief, you know, wrapped around his hand, right? As the police cruise was going by. Again, I talk about how they use the deportation theme, and this is what they were doing. And you'll see it again where they're going to get a young lady wearing the Grenada flag hand handkerchief over her head. Then we got to the other bus stop. By, by the bus stop, there was a Grenada flag handkerchief on the floor next to um, you know one of those uh, uh, you know in front the storefronts you have like these gates that you go down uh, into the basement of them right so it was open there was a Grenada handkerchief right there so I can see it you know because again I have to walk past it to get to the bus stop so things are sp uh, strategically placed where you can notice it and again this is all part of the the conditioning, right? So the repeated things over and over again. Okay? So, yeah. So this is what they were doing. Okay? 
All right, so let's. Uh, okay, so let's uh, create a video. And there's a reason why they park there, you see? Because again, they get the community involved in your targeting. Okay? Okay, let's, let's, let's go back. Now, again, so I always say this, right? When you think about this, right? In the community where black people live, right? You have police in that community targeting, harassing, arresting black people, you know, exponentially, right? Yet, those same black individuals who work together with those same police officers to target person like me. Why is that? Right? Mind control. Okay? That's what that is. Because if the police in that precinct, right, can stop a 17-year-old on the street, assault him, right, charge him with a crime in which he did not commit, yet the next day those same police officers are working with the people in the community or the people in the community are taking uh, uh, commands from these same officers to target me, right? I see this shit a lot, and I said to myself, wow, you know, it's unbelievable, but when you see for yourself, you understand. When you truly open your eyes and see it, you get to understand the power of mind control, okay? Okay, so now you'll see this, again, uh, this woman here, young woman here, and you'll see she's going into her apartment. She's looking at me, all right? Now watch as she's opened up her door. She's still looking at me, and you'll see her point towards me, okay? So she, she stays there, and you see what she does? Just point towards me very briefly as she holds her, the door and then she's staring at me, right? So again, this is how what they again we talk about subliminal message in terms of uh, and I talk about how they try to psychologically castrate you. So by threatening that if you talk to uh, a, a woman or whichever sex you like, they're gonna arrest you, what have you. You know, then there are times where they'll try to send me subliminal message about talking to a particular person that they want me to talk to. And that's when I start to realize that, you know, a lot of these people that I've met in the past, but particularly women, you know, have all been brainwashed, manipulated, you know, working in tandem with these crooked ass police officers. Okay? And sometimes, like I said, a lot of times I wonder, you know, like I said to myself, at what point did they turn Pam to where she starts attacking me psychologically so heavy now? Okay. Okay. So again, and once I saw that, I didn't stop. I started recording because I knew what was coming. Okay. So here we are at the bus stop. Okay. Wait. Let me make sure this is the right one. Starts. Okay. So at the beginning. All right. Okay, she, she's another woman here. Again, remember, we talk about the masking techniques, right? So they try to mask how they, you know, they want to give me the middle finger. Unlike me, I'll just stick my middle finger up in front of their faces. I don't give a shit, okay? But they know what they're doing to me, okay? The majority of them do, I believe so. With the aid of the technology, because I think some of them understand the technology exists. Others don't. Okay? 
and so you see she's going into her wallet but you know again with the middle finger right and you'll see now I want you also to look at the expression on some of these people's face and you can tell that they're they're mad right? you can tell that they're mad now another thing is that because I started wearing my glasses now like I said they, they used to try to um, get me to wear my glasses outside but my glasses is for reading so I don't really wear it outside because then you know that make my eyesight worse and probably what it is that they want to happen anyway but I don't so a lot of times people with glasses will come up to me stare at me or people wearing glasses walk past me to have another civilian there uh, doing you know stuff so watch okay see as she again she's giving me the middle finger right here the other woman is walking beside her you'll see her do the folded lips again you know that subliminal be quiet right that okay right there uh, she's giving me the middle finger be quiet but I'm not gonna be quiet I'm gonna continue to expose what's being done and I know they don't like it because again in the coercive persuasion program their goal, the architect of these programs, their goal is to get away with it by silencing the victims. Right? It's not going to work. Okay? And I got to pause it because I want to catch the subliminals and how they uh condition me okay okay so remember I read about uh the thing about uh transportation sometimes how they try to make you wait very long for your bus to come or deny your transportation that's something they do to my brother who'll be waiting at the bus stop and you know, all of a sudden he's there for like a half an hour, hour, no bus coming. When he calls into the bus depot to tell him, well, the bus, uh, they cancel the bus and stuff like that. So they do shit like this all the time. But, you know, in a big city like New York, what they'll do is that if you, you know, this is a select bus. And the select bus, you have to buy the, the bus pass here. And, you know, there's no way I can buy it here because it doesn't give you, uh, you know, that for me, I pay 135 on the bus because of my disability. And so I have to use the limited bus or the regular bus. Uh, I can't use the select bus because, again, uh, for that reason. Okay, so they'll send like a whole bunch of select buses, all right? And out there waiting at the bus stop 20 minutes, half an hour, while five and six select buses come one after the other. And again, this happens all the time. You know, but they do it for a reason because, again, when they want to engage in the psychological psyops, the street theater against me, um, you know, they are, they're not going to send a, a regular bus my way until, you know, they're finished doing what, they, what they're doing. So you see, again, another woman here. You see her doing this? Okay, because the one thing they notice now is that. I am recording them as they walk by, and then you'll see this woman here again. She does the hand signal, the four fingers. Okay, see another woman walking by here. She's going to grab her nose. Let's go back slightly because I want to get it right before the woman uh, passed. Because I want to catch it at the exact moment, right there. So she walked past. Again, I'm not trying to talk to anybody. Trigger warning. She does this. Okay. See that? Okay. And guess what? So now, again, and I talk about 
them working in tandem with one another. Okay, grab her nose. Now watch what she does. This woman here. She's looking at my children and she's doing this. Okay, again, subliminal message if you don't shut up, we're going to target your children. You know, <laughs> tell you. Okay, now look at her now. Now she does three fingers, right? Now what? Again, this is the shit that they do. So sometimes they go from four to three, right? Significance of it, I don't know. But this is what they'll do. And again, this is it's to throw you off, to confuse you. So let's go, guy walking by, he's doing. Okay, and then the thumb. See, she sticks her thumbs up. Okay, so she, then she puts it back down, right? <laughs> See? Okay, next guy comes walking down. What you do? Puts his pointed finger on his nose, and at that point, the police vehicle right there that was there starts to drive off. Because again, this is hand signal. So remember, I talk about this right early on in my t in my targeting when I was working. Uh, I should bring a drop downstairs. Then I would take the stairs and every time I take the stairs there would be an uh, undercover police officer there uh, leaning under the rail end with his finger like this right and then after months and months of going through that uh, now civilians will walk on the street with doing this have their hands you know to their side but with their pointed finger you know out as they close their rest of their fingers so this is where all of this is coming from. This is all, again, new linguistic programming that was done to me, Doc NLP. Okay, that was done to me. Okay, I just had to fix something, so I don't want you guys to see that. All right, so that's why they keep doing this. Okay, and that's why you see the police here, because again, when you talk about, when I talk about sending someone a, a subliminal message, but using a third party to do it, so like I said, uh, what they'll do is the cops will be behind them or, you know, as they're walking towards me, they'll, you know, grab their ears, you know, pinch their nose, as, you'll, as you know, you have seen while the police is behind them. So the police is not saying nothing, but they're saying something knowing that to me, because, you know, they're doing this to me with the police there. Because it's the it's, it's their, the police way of getting away with harassing me, okay? Because they know they're not gonna arrest the civilians, right? For doing what they do, because again they're covered, right? They this is psychological, so they think that they're covered, that they can do this, right? So then you'll see them again, you know, as they drive, they they're driving off, okay? Now watch what comes next. Okay, I'm going to explain to you guys the subliminal. You'll see the, uh, again, the girl right by the, uh, again, the ticket. Okay. So, I went back a little bit too far. 
que es ahí hams knows now watch her now see again she's gonna do the same thing with the pointed finger except she's not gonna touch her nose but she's gonna stick the finger out okay and there she goes and then as the police that's why I now turn the phone to record the police the driver in the uh, in the vehicle was doing this he was covering his mouth Okay. Okay, so now here comes another woman. Okay, she's doing this. And pointing the, using the the, the pointed finger, the index finger, so you as a trigger. Okay. Now again, female all black, let's do this. Now here she comes. Now they're gonna to try to. She's gonna to try the to mask, giving me the finger. Again, I can spot them. See that? I can as if. Hey, I'm going into my phone. Okay, that's a little bit too uh, much here. I'm trying to see. See this? They, and they're pretty smart too because, you know, they'll use the civilian to block any, uh, uh so that I can't get the footage of them as they were the camera wasn't couldn't pick it up but I could pick it up of the officer covering his mouth as he's driving by right because at the point where he gets in front of uh, gets uh, to where this guy is that that is when he did it and then he took his hands down so they're very smart they're very smart and very crafty in how they do things okay so again why is she sticking her finger out when you know, she she's not even at the front of the machine yet, but she's already sticking her finger there, right? Again, this is all subliminal. So now you see her give me the middle finger as she tried to make it seem like she's fixing her uh, her her clothes or she's pulling her clothes because that doesn't make any sense, right? Think about it. So you're doing that to grab your sweater, but then you're gonna go right back to letting it go so you can go into your sweater. It doesn't make any sense. But again, understanding human behavior is key. When it comes to explaining how they target you, right? So just like I did, see, I just give me the middle finger, try to be slick about it, okay? And again, you can look at the faces of these people, and they can tell what's going on, because there's a certain look that they'll give you. All right, so now the other perp comes, stands up in front of me. Now, I use the red theme. Look at her. She's looking directly at my kids. Again, trying to send me some no threats. Now, they're going to follow um, fixation drill. Okay. And she's going to look up in the sky, which a lot of you are going to see doing. Again, this is falls into the, um, we talk about the eight criteria of thought reform by Jay Lifton. Okay. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, I think I might have closed it up. But anyway, the eight criteria of uh, brainwashing by Jay Lifton. And it talks about the mystical manipulation to try to get the person who they're running this scheme on to believe it's some type of supernatural thing that's happening, right? But we all know that's not true because if you read it, it says this is all orchestrated. And once you understand that, then, you know, you'll forget this whole mystical manipulation. Not mystical manipulation, but this mystical thing that's happening around you. Nothing supernatural is going on. This is all orchestrated. Either uh, uh, through the technology, or the technology, and people being uh, trained exactly how to engage in targeting you as they uh, come into uh, contact with you or, or if as, as they walk by you to and from you.
So again, you see they are working in tandem. You see this guy right here in the black. He was standing next to me. This guy right here in the blue shirt and the shorts. When he sees him, he steps out because now they're going to use both of them now in my targeting. So you see how he they look at each other, right? Now watch. See another young woman again. Just doing this. Okay, now he turns around, looks at me, does this. Okay. See both of them working in tandem. That's why I turn the camera to the other dude. Because again, what they're going to do, they're going to position people at every corner around you so that they can send you know you these subliminal messages this harassment uh, protocol and tactics that they do okay so now he steps over now all right now watch where he his hands drop right next to his crotch and then you're gonna start to see him now try to mask the grabbing of his crotch right you see they're all looking up in the sky well she is anyway in the black and white polka dot dress Okay, so now he comes and he turns towards me now because again he's again they're all working together so they know who is who. Right? So the woman in the back of my polka dot dress looking up at the sky again. Now he turns and you'll see where he positions his hands, right? Okay, now he's not gonna grab on his crotch because it's too obvious because I'm recording. If I wasn't recording, that's exactly what he would have done. Okay? All right. Now, now he's looking at him now, and they are all looking inside this Popeyes now. You know, I know they wanted me to look in there because they were all looking inside this Popeyes, and you're gonna see the, the, uh, the, the dramatization that they're gonna go through to try to get me to look into the Popeyes. Guess, and then now they, you know, like I, I forgot to mention this. You know, it's the summertime, so now they're gonna use the water bottle fixation drill. This is what they do. Pam does it too. The other night, um, we were talking. All of a sudden, she takes two empty bottles, put it on the bed. Okay, instead of putting it in the garbage, she puts it on the bed. She's looking at me, and I guess she wanted to see if, you know, if it somehow triggers me. Okay? And it didn't. I didn't pay it any mind because it doesn't mean shit to me. Well, there's full, halfway, whatever, empty, whatever, you don't mean jack to me. Right? So when she realized that it's not working with the water bottle, she takes the water bottle, walks off to put it in the garbage, you know, hands behind the back, palm open, doing the fixation drill, the palm fixation drill on me. So again, you'll see, uh, you know, they know, they know. Okay. Again, the woman behind him, she's looking up in the sky. Because, again, you know, they never deviate. No matter how much they can't affect you or make you believe it's a supernatural, godly thing. Because, again, this is what the religious cults do. This is, you know, how they operate. Okay? So you guys have to understand that. Okay, so now you're going to see her. And what is she doing? She's taking her middle finger, kind of, you know, not sticking it all the way, but just to, just enough to mask her giving me the middle finger. All right, and then she's going to do this again, that V shape uh, thing that they do, um, you know, a bunch of nonsense. Okay, then she does this, you know, that, you know, again trying, you know, say hey, you know. 
real, you know, you're going to be gay or what have you. Like, whatever. I'm, I'm not attracted to men, so I'm not gay. But, um, you know, this is what they try to do, right? Because they figure that if they do this over and over, that their condition and their program is going to work to the point where, you know, and yeah, it will work if you don't know what's happening to you. Okay? And again, that's just a lot, of, to me, when I see, you know, an increase in homosexuality within the black community, I know for a fact that these people, our people are being manipulated into homosexuality. A lot of our people are being manipulated into homosexuality, okay? And to be able to see the targeting, to see the, the, the psychological process, the coercive nature and what they do, okay? That's why they want me to shut up so bad. Okay, so now, again, I'm going to move back into scene now. And what he's doing here, he's basically um, doing that, uh, you know, this right here, but upside down. You know, the peace sign, upside down. Okay. You try to be slick about it. I watch her. What does she do? She sticks her tongue out right there. Okay. Now he turns back, look on okay, here, put his hands down by way of his crotch areas. Again, you know, understanding how they mask these things is key. Now while I was recording this, even though I was seeing it, I basically had to block my mind out from thinking anything. Okay, because I had my kids with me too, so I was, you know, you'll hear me saying, you know, move back here, here, because I was paying attention to them also. But I knew what these people were doing. Okay. I see this guy. All right. So again, they're all looking inside this Popeyes that I that I was at uh, in front of. So here, this this young lady comes, walk, turns around. And walks off again. <laughs> you see? Now he turns around. Okay. And what does he do? This. Okay. So you see, my bus hasn't come yet. Okay. Again, he puts his hands right where his crotch area is. Okay. Now check this out. Okay. Here is the phase the other phase and what they do. Remember I tell you guys about how they will find people from your past and this is a high school, uh, this is a girl I went high school with. This is a woman that I went high school with with teenagers and I guess they have gotten to her. They, you know, and she's, you know, she's not a religious person. She used to be, you know, and the sad thing is that her son was murdered. Okay? And so, you know, a lot of the stuff that I post on religion, you know, she usually likes and, you know what I'm saying, because she understands that, you know, hey, this belief in this God, you know, people tell you, oh, have faith in God, believe in God, God will give you anything you ask for, but yet God allows someone to kill her son, right? And then people in the church are saying to her, you know, well, he's in a better place now, you know, God called them home. You know, all this nonsense. You know, you can't tell that to a grieving mother. But that's what these Christians do. You know what I'm saying? That's what they do. They're very insensitive when it comes to your loved ones dying with this whole thing about God called them home and all this nonsense. They don't care about your grieving. Right? Because to them, it is perfectly fine that your your, your child got is, is dead or your loved one is dead. Okay? As long as they believe in this nonsense about God, this and God, that, right? So I know for a fact that they brainwashed her. I know for a fact. Because when I play the video, you see her walking by, you see the look on her face. It's like a blank stare. And it's one that you know, I've seen many times within my own family. My sister, who they used to talk to me a lot in the beginning, she used to come home with this blank stare on her face. Okay? 
as if she's been she was just been brainwashed. It was like it was like it wasn't her. Okay, so like I said, I've seen this already. So again, they know that I know her. So you'll see as he this guy in the in the um the young guy in the blue shirt, you know, and again this is what they'll do sometimes is this again another with the V shape, right? So another, you know. Right? So I gotta think of a word for when they do that, you know? Uh um, I got I gotta find a word. So whatever, you know, it, nothing comes up when they you know do that, but you know, like again, you start to recognize the pattern, you know, you see it, you see it very early. So that way that way you can head off the the deep psychological condition. So I want to um, go to this page here. And the reason why I had this up here. Okay. This is a document, right, from the MK Ultra program. And it talks about let's see what's the uh, okay hypnotism and covert operation okay and so let's talk about what they want to do right who can be hypnotized the introduction of hypnosis pre-testing for suggestibility induction procedure verbal suggestion fascination plus verbal suggestion micro hypnosis awakening post hypnotic suggestion age regression other factors what makes a good subjects what characterizes a good operator stages of hypnosis laws of hypnosis and so forth can a subject be hypnotized against his will right which we all know that's exactly true okay anybody tell you no they don't know shit okay okay disguise pre-testing disguise introduction specific operational situation so disguise pre-testing right so what do they do they subliminally do things to people to see if they're to see how they can hypnotize them that's specifically to their mindset right and to disguise the introduction of hyp hypnosis, which is the coercive persuasion program, right? In which things are being done in tiny steps that bypass your conscious mind and embed itself into your subconscious. Okay? So I want to uh, read this part here, right? And this is, uh, it says, one of the for foremost U.S. laboratory experimenters with hypnosis on one occasion, and this is from 1939 now, okay, converted a campus atheist to a devout believer. The same operate, operator was on the point of trying to try a similar experiment in reverse with a divinity student when the university authority authorities forbade further testers. So it was okay for them to do it on a person who is an atheist but the minute they try to do it to a person who is a believer they wouldn't allow them to do it right so just to give you the context of how uh, if you're an atheist back then you know you're subjected to any damn thing and they don't care now they do it to believers so now it doesn't even matter now you're an atheist or a believer they're gonna do that shit to you regardless so when you hear when I hear uh, TIs, you know, who will say, well, well, the reason why you're targeted is because you're an atheist. Well, you're a Christian. So what's the reason why you're targeted? You ever, you ever thought about the fact that you're a Christian? You might, be, you might be targeted because of that, right? But they don't think like that, right? Again, that's just a ridiculous notion of these believers. It's just unbelievable. Okay? So before the conversion to religion through hypnosis had been erased by negative suggestion, right the subject had over two weeks given every sign of being a dedicated religious convert he was restored to his former disbelief i know of no way of estimating how long the hypno the 
hip hypnotical imposed orientation would have endured. But once implanted, of course, circumstances tends to reinforce it. Given a subject who could be converted at all, the new orientation might become permanent. Okay? Yeah, excuse me, I had a um, phone call. Okay, so anyway. So here they talk about and saying that, hey, if we hypnotize somebody, all right? And for two weeks they've done it to this individual, okay? And his belief, his new belief kept getting reinforced, but not by the person who hypnotized him, but maybe by other people, by other people with the same belief system that he now has. Okay? I mean, that was, you know, this is this is very telling, right? And again, this is from 1939, right? Okay, so it says, as part of their indoctrination, CIA staff personnel might be tested for hypnotic susceptibility Actually, it appears to be easier to hypnotize large numbers of people. Get that? It is easier to hypnotize large numbers of people than a single subject. Okay, and then it talks about for the best subject to go under quickly uh, and such and such, which, I, which I'm not going to get into. So anyway, let's get back to the video. All right, and we we'll talk about this uh, woman who, like I said, you know, went to high school with, and now they're going to use her, okay? And what they're going to try to do, and they've done this every time they um, try to find someone that I know from my past from my school days or maybe somebody that looks like somebody that I've dated in the past is to try to get me to speak to them okay and so I already saw this coming and what they were doing because like I said I've been through it many times okay so now remember that the girl with the backpack that walked towards me and walked back turned and walked back over so now as Andrea's coming, she's going to walk behind her. Now you see the woman here in the white dress. She's doing this, the uh, hand signal. Okay, and then you look at uh, Andrea. She is um, okay. So now she starts looking again. She her eyes. See where her eyes look at? Right at the Popeyes. Because like I said, they want me to look in the Popeyes so bad. Okay, not falling for it though. Okay, and then as you see, as she gets close to me, you see her thumb sticking her thumb up as such. Okay, and now she starts to look at my kids. I you can say, look at her face, look at her face. She's look really zombified, really. Okay, so now. Because I didn't say anything as I pan the camera back, the phone back, right? Watch what happened. So now you see this woman, she's standing here and she's doing, she's yawning. She's like, <laughs> I do that to them too because to let them know that, hey, it's not working. You're boring. You know? So that's what it is. I guess I'm boring them. Well, I can be boring them because obviously I didn't do what she wanted me to do or what she thought I was going to do. Right? Okay. And again, she's looking up. Sticks her thumb out.
again. You'll see them. Again, they're looking up. See they're looking up. They're looking in the Popeyes. Okay. And then you'll see her with the palm fixation drill that she's played with her hair. You see that her palm is facing out. That way I can see it. Okay. Now she stops playing with her hair. Okay. All right. Now, did you see what she did at, as she just walked by? Let's get it again. Maybe I can pause it. See, and there you go. See, the guy is with the glasses, right? So what it is, okay, this is what he's doing, right? And I talk about that, how they, with the fixation with the glasses, so he's going to make eye contact with me, all right? Okay. Now watch what she does. And you'll see me pause it. Uh, uh, missed it. I didn't, uh, I thought I had pan the camera, but as she walked, I was looking, she was doing this. Okay. Again, another woman walking past. Hands behind the back, hand single, signal, hand signal. Okay, and now uh, guess what she does too? The same thing, palm fixation drill. Okay, that's too far. Alright, let's just see. Okay. She goes. You'll see it here as she starts pulling her hair. See how she her palm of her hand is facing out like this now as she's pulling her hair like the other uh, young woman did as she was walking by. Okay. There he goes. So all of these buses that walk, I mean that drove past, right? He not he's his portion is done. Okay. So now he's gonna leave. Now you see he did this twice, right? So again. Remember I talked about when things are being done repeatedly, it is a conditioning phase, right? Alright, so there he goes. He's going to do it again as he walk by. Okay, and now he's looking at me now. Now he looks down at his wallet. Now again, this guy has been standing there for the longest while, right? So you see in this, so all these buses pass by. Now he's going to decide that okay, now I'm going to purchase my uh, my ticket, right? <laughs> okay. He's like, now I'm going to purchase my ticket. Okay. And there you go. You see again, guy walking by, hands behind his back, sticking his thumb out, see the fixation drill with the palm of the hand. Okay. I'm not imagining this. This is being done purposely. Again, just looking at her phone, doing this. So we're going to expose them. Okay, so now, again, move into the next phase. Remember, I talk about how they send these, you know, people talking to themselves, <laughs> you know. Uh, these people who clearly, you know, they got probably from the um, mental institution or somewhere. Okay. 
Yep, hear me say that? <laughs> okay, there you go again. Now, as she's turning, palm fixation drill. That's why she's doing that. See how in the green here, now she's pointing her finger. See that? Again, they try to mask it. Okay, watch that. Okay, now they're going to do the three fingers. See, try to sneak that in there. Mm -hmm. See that? She's looking at me. Again, you got to expose them. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Again, you see they're looking up. All right, then she uh, turns, this old lady here, old elderly woman. She looks into the Popeye. He looks at his phone, looks into the Popeye. Yeah, like I said, there must have been somebody in the Popeye they want me to, um, or something going on in the Popeye that they want me to um, look into so I can see. You know, probably some type of street theater within the Popeye itself. All right, so another elderly lady. She's me again. You'll see her do this. All right. You know, she's standing there. Say, so look at the expression on their face. Some of them are pretty mad. Again, he's gonna look into the the Popeyes. <laughs> Okay, see what she does there. Gotta try to make her finger like a gun. Try to send me some subliminal thrust, th threat. Okay, check this out. Okay, watch her. See that? Okay, and, uh, another woman doing this. Okay, so let's go by. Let's 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 play normal speed. And that's me laughing now. Cause I'm laughing now, cause it's funny. Again, all them looking into the Popeyes. Now, what is so interesting about what's going on inside the Popeyes? Because you see, they're not looking into any other establishment except for the establishment which I was standing in front of, which was the Popeyes. Again, another, she's doing this. Just walking by. Okay, doing this. Again. Pause that. Okay, let's do this. Okay, and here comes the next phase. So, this woman in the green dress. So, when she comes, she's this woman here. She's going to start acting up. Okay, so now she starts shaking the keys in her hand. As she's doing that, you'll see this young girl here starts tugging on her ears. Now they, know, they know they're being recorded. They know they're being recorded. So, again, some of them, like I said, are fully aware of what it is that they're doing. Okay. Now I want you to let's go. So as soon as she's 
See again, what they're trying to do, again, it's called anchoring. So a sudden woman, they try to anchor. So as she comes, this, this woman right here, the chicks, the, the chick, but the, the, the black woman, young woman, they're standing right there, start shaking the keys in her hands. Okay. Hello. You see the you see how she's she looking because she thought I looked into the Popeyes, but I didn't. That's why she turns around. I'm gonna show you to you guys again. Okay, so she sees me and I didn't look back, then she turns to look back in the Popeyes and watch as she breaks her neck to look back at me. See that? Look at her. And again, the palm fixation drill. See that? All right, so they got this, again, these young girls again. You know, she's standing with her hands up, palm of her hand. Okay, and then they're gonna. You can you can tell that they just did a target because the minute I turn, because they wanted me to look into that Popeye so bad, and the minute I turn, and I didn't even turn to look into the Popeye, I was I turned because my son, I was he was going to stand by the entrance of the Popeye because again this is the technology they're using on him to try to get me to look into the Popeye because they everything that they did didn't work so far. So now they got to use it on my son. So he can go stand in front of the entrance. Like I said, why are you standing in front of the entrance? People got to walk in and out, move from there. Okay, and you see those the, the woman who had two daughters, other first daughters or not, but you see how they just stand there and then they turn around and walk their way, right? Again, I walk in see you do this okay oh yeah so we're gonna expose them we're gonna continue exposing them see now again he's trying to sneak the middle finger at me Now you see how many buses pass by, right? These are all select buses. There's no regular buses gonna come by. We've been out there for like 15 minutes, almost 20 minutes. Okay, so now the next phase is her in the green dress. Standing there. Okay. When she moves, now she comes. Okay, and look again. And that's me started laughing. Now, I want you guys to check this out. So, I'm going to start laughing a little louder. Okay? And I'm going to tell you how they move in real time because of the microchip that they're going to be able to clone my laugh. And they're going to put it into this guy's mind as he walks past me. Again, try to mask, you know, that finger, like, you know, yeah, you're going to shoot me. Whatever. I don't give a shit. You want to kill me? Go ahead and kill me. Go ahead. I'm not afraid of that. 
but the one thing I know is that you're not going to shut me up. Again, it's your, you know, young teenager, again, pulling up the lips. Oh, I think I might have, uh, Okay, let's go back here a little bit. Okay, we did that. 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 Okay, we did that. Yep. Okay. So let's go to the next video. We're still at the bus stop. Again, let's see. How they use the color, the red theme. All right. And you see her again back here uh, in white. Start tugging on her ears. Okay, now here's something interesting here. Uh, I need to uh, try and uh, get this. Uh, let's see here. Let's try to let's boot over this up a little bit. Okay. Goes the hand behind the backhand signal. She's yawning. Now here she comes again. See, see that? Try to do that gun finger. Okay, let's go back. She's over there. Right, let's see. I want to. You're right. There you go. Ah, check this out. So you'll see her stick her middle finger at me right there. See that? You see that, right? <laughs> okay. Again, followed by, you know, the girl behind him sticking. Did they go to. You know, she's not. She's. She basically, she's playing her hair, doing the, the palm fixation drill, yawning at the same time. Check this out. And now she's gonna come back. The woman come back over here. She, so again, she does the upside down P sign, and I do it to them too. Okay. I'll check it out. Try to do the mass, the subliminal threat. And uh, again, just looking down at my crotch. You know this, these uh. Okay, so now he's doing this with this, you know, like a fist fight. You wanna, you know, sometimes I miss a bit of this about fighting me, what have you. Fight me. Okay, that's all. Fight me. Fuck it. Fuck the subliminal shit. Step to me. That's all. Step to me. Again, staring into the. The Popeyes. Now you'll still see this in these teenage girls now. 
and again they're gonna do the fixated hands shit that they they do. This is what they do, right? So they come and they start talking loud in front of me. All right, so now here again you'll see when I, when I talked about when I went to the store the guy coming towards us was the two police cruiser was driving by slowly he had the the handkerchief like what she's wearing on her head is the flag of Grenada she's wearing it on her head as she's walking by see that what happened that's how they can clone your your laughs okay and he just basically did it out of the blue because you know what I was there laughing so again this is how they show me that yeah and we talk about uh, cloning of uh, emotional um, cloning of emotions that they're able to clone the emotions of people and transmit it into someone else. Okay? Okay? So now after they finish now, now they they send the bus. Okay, let's go. Okay, and again, you'll see here again, looking into the McDonald's, the hand signals. Okay. See, all, all of this because they were sending me a subliminal message about because you know going to college you know to better yourself or what have you because again when we talk about this program okay and we truly now know what this program is okay so look at the look in their face now <laughs> right look at the look in their face Okay, so see the girl behind there? Again, looking into the Popeyes doing this. Okay. Like I said, I don't know why they were looking at Popeye, but whatever is in the Popeye, that didn't really uh, pay any attention because, you know, I know that's what they wanted to do. See, and then she sticks her finger in her ears. Okay, acting as if she's uh, fixing something or what have you. She ain't fixing anything. And you see, she first she um, covered her mouth. Let's go back slightly. Let's see if I can get a good pause it. All right, so you see, now the hands coming towards me, palm fixation drill. Okay. You see the I wonder what the one behind her was doing. Let me just try let me pause it exactly to where okay, and there she is playing with her hair. Alright, again, looking in the Popeyes. I don't know who the hell was or whatever it was going on that was in the Popeyes. But apparently they want to be looking there so bad and they think that I know what's going on inside the Popeyes. I don't. Okay, I didn't look in the Popeyes. Didn't give a damn what was in the Popeyes. Because I knew they wanted me to look in the Popeyes. So everything, and then there she go again. See that? 
Okay, remember these people are being put up to this <clears throat> by those within law enforcement. Okay, that's why you see the police car parked up as I turn the corner. When I let the bus stop, the police car drive by with the police officer doing this as they drive by covering their them out from the 71st precinct. Okay, so again, they're there for the reason. Okay. Guess me putting money in the uh, in the machine on the bus, and I kept, you know, rolling. I didn't stop recording. <clears throat> Again. She's acting as if she's talking. She there's no phone in her hand. Again palm fixation drill because you see there's no phone in her hand but she's putting her hands up their ears see that because again she's sticking her hands in her ears as you do the palm fixation drill okay guy in the back of the bus sitting down he's doing this Now look how you look how you staring at my kid. All right, these people are a bunch of cowards. Okay, they won't step to me, right? If they have a problem with me, but they look at my kids because they're a bunch of motherfucking pussies. And I say it so they can hear it. They were all a bunch of motherfucking pussies. That's why they look at your kids. See, this is what bullies do, right? When they meet somebody who they can't fuck with, right? When they do the psychological shit, right? So now they look at your kids, they try to threaten your kids, right? Because they know they can't threaten you and intimidate you. So they try to use their kids. Grown ass people. Right? Grown ass people. Now what kind of mentality do these people have? What kind of mentality do these people have? right you have to be mentally insane to engage in the behavior that these people are engaging with they have to be mentally insane but like I said they won't step to me okay so sorry for the cursing but you know I, I gotta tell like it is all these adult people, men and women. If you get, I don't even know these people. If you got a problem with me, which you shouldn't have, because I don't know you. You don't know me except for what you've been told, right? By these cult leaders, by these uh, Christian fanatics that are within law enforcement who think that it's okay to do this shit. But you won't step to me and say anything. But you want to look at my kids. That's what these people do. Okay? That is what these people do. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it is unbelievable. Okay. What these people will do. All right. Well, listen, this is a very long video. It's the longest video I've ever done. It's almost, <laughs> what is it, two hours and 50 minutes in a couple seconds. Okay. Uh, I was going to break it up, but. I was on a roll, so I said, you know, let me just finish it. Anyway, 
Uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.